We talk a lot in our shows about the oversized impact that the pandemic has had on issues of equality, in particular exacerbating inequality that was already present in societies. Has the pandemic and the transition into work from home, into flexible working practices, has it been a net positive or a net, pos or, or a net negative or challenge for some of the people that you represent? Firstly, thank you for inviting me on, uh, on today. Such an important topic. Um, I'm probably going to sit on the fence there and go at net neutral. Uh, there's certainly uh -huh. a lot of uh, positives that have come out of uh, COVID, if I can use that term, relating to the awareness and understanding of flexible working uh, and, and doing things differently to achieve uh, what business uh, requires to achieve. Um, but it has also highlighted uh, a certain need to focus on digital accessibility and really strengthen some of the inclusive and accessible practices that we have that we see in the workplace, but equally how we deliver services uh, and design products for our customers. And um, so while there's definitely been some, some benefits in that uh, shaping uh, perceptions and awareness around flexible working and working from home, uh, it hasn't come without its challenges. Has there been headway when it comes to businesses, employers realising the advantages of employing people with disabilities? Yes, yeah, certainly. We've certainly seen that here in Australia. We're, a, we're an employer network organisation and uh, the increase in organisations very much wanting to do the right thing from an inclusive perspective of people with disability, both as customers and employees, and often reaching out to uh, find out the how. How do we do this? to make sure that we're inclusive um, and retaining the skills and talents of their employees that may acquire disability. So certainly from an awareness perspective, um, a want and a demand perspective, the, the engagement has certainly increased here in Australia and globally with many campaigns such as the Valuable 500 uh, coming into play and leaders and board members really seeing and understanding the need to ensure that their practices are inclusive and that there's many skills and talents out uh, of people with disability out there that they could be uh, bringing onto their organisation. So, Amy, among people with disabilities, what is the number one thing they want or that really bugs them? I saw, I was walking down the street in my neighbourhood, there was a lady, um, a blind woman, and she was walking along and I thought she was having a bit of, you know, trouble figuring out where she was and I stopped to say something to her and she says, I'm fine. Thank you very much, but I'm fine. As, as so, you know, leave me alone. I don't need help. So what what is it that people without, quote unquote, disabilities are not doing for people with disabilities, particularly in the workplace, that should be done? I think that's a really uh, useful example to, to share. And it, and it brings forward this desire for us as human beings that we want to be able to do the right thing. Uh, but when we don't know exactly what that is, we often then fear of getting it wrong um, retreat back and don't do anything at all. And really when it comes to positive inclusion and making sure that our environments are accessible, it is actually about asking what we need to do differently, if anything, to ensure that people can participate. And quite regularly, people with disability won't necessarily need any adjustments to do the jobs that they've been employed for or to, to uh, go to the shops, etc. cetera. Um, so asking the question, uh, if someone does require any assistance, being comfortable if they don't, but equally being comfortable to explore what that might look like with the individual so that they can participate uh, in society, whether that's through employment, education, mm -hmm. accessing uh, you know, shops, et cetera. So, so it mean, really is about that, uh, not making any assumptions right. and the context to ask the question. So, I mean, as you look down the road, say, 10 years, what's the number one government step that could be taken, the number one corporate step that many people with disabilities and, and their friends and families would say, great, it finally got done? Employment, uh, without, without a shadow of a doubt. And, and the key aspect around ensuring that we have got an employment and a workforce that represents the community is around adjustments. So um, when organisations are designing their environments, whether that's digital or physical, uh, when they're thinking about the diversity of their workforce, starting with accessibility so that we are building an environment that's accessible from the start, which makes it easier and an open market then for people with disability to represent their skills and talents uh, within the workforce. 
So having a real clear understanding about providing adjustments, workplace adjustments, reasonable adjustments in the workforce really does make a huge difference for people with disability to, to be employed. And that starts from the recruitment process. Okay. Because if the recruitment process isn't accessible, and if the, there isn't any encouraging um, understanding for candidates around what would be mm -hmm. done from an adjustment perspective, they can't even get in the front door. Um, so, so being able to ensure that you've got accessible okay. uh, systems and, and processes is really key.